This year's SMA conference considers how thematic or synthesised views are studied or presented in museums, considers how the concept of Roman is presented to the public, how this varies between different museums and collections, what collections are driving the choice of artefacts displayed in museums and how these affect interpretations and engagement with collections. So the theme, when I read it, resonated with ideas I've been having about Watling Street and it's raised a number of questions for me. So I wondered, is there an overarching narrative of Roman Britain into which individual collections can be linked so individual museums can play to their strengths to tell part of this bigger story? Who are the displays aimed at? Predominantly the local community, the local taxpayers, or travelling tourists doing Roman Britain? So members of English Heritage or the National Trust and other tourists. And I think I've picked up lots of ideas today on that. So I come to these questions as a Roman pottery specialist working in a commercial archaeology section. I'm not a museum specialist. So again, I, I kind of feel part of the thing of coming to this conference is actually to learn from museum specialists. And I've picked up a lot of information from the various talks. I'm very interested to hear the museum perspective. And the main aim of presenting the paper is to get ideas and opinions to see if there's a project that might be de developed. I think it's one of the great strengths of SMA conference that a range of people are encouraged and supported to attend. So thank you for inviting me to speak. And there seems to be a theme at the conference of going back into your youth and recounting some tales. So I just thought I'd add in that when, was it was about 1974 when Duncan was wherever he was, I was at Abbey Green here in Chester as a schoolgirl volunteering on an excavation, but didn't know I was going to spend the rest of my life looking at bits of broken pottery there. So Watling Street. At the 2014 SMA conference, Francis McIntosh presented a paper on the wall face exhibition on Hadrian's Wall, and a couple of years later was reporting on the Hadrian's Cavalry project. These projects got me thinking about linear monuments. Hadrian's Wall, 84 miles long, obviously went out of use in antiquity. It's a world heritage site passing through some wild and beautiful landscapes with picturesque stretches and standing remains. It's a lovely tourist destination. Watling Street's over 200 miles long. Um, much of it remains in use today for its original purpose of transport. There's some picturesque sections, but there's also many noisy and un unattractive stretches. It also has standing remains, but somehow these are seen as isolated monuments in the landscape. Watling Street, as an ancient monument itself, seems almost invisible. And as our um, archaeologists, our focus is usually ex on excavated sites. We tend not to look on the spaces in between them. And perhaps, um, you know, as, as museum curators, you're thinking about your museum, your responsibility to your county or whoever's funding that museum, rather than how different museums link together. So my question, I think, in presenting this paper is to ask, how do we encourage people to think about journeys? So it's traveling into the past, to and through the past, and linking all these different stories up. And I don't know if you've read either of these books. I kind of hi highly recommend them. And I think it picks up on what Gail was saying, again, as well, about different people telling different stories. I had a discussion about the John Higgs book with another pottery specialist. And she didn't like it. She said, oh, it's too much about him. But that's what I loved about it. It's his personal journey up Watling Street. And it's looking at actually modern, modern life, but through a journey up Watling Street. So Watling Street cuts through the heart of England, from Dover in the south, southeast to Roxton in the northwest, with roads continuing on to Chester and Anglesey. It passes by Canterbury, Rochester, London, St Albans, Milton Keynes, Towster, Atherston, Manchester and Wall. Passes through countryside and urban sprawl, past areas of wealth and areas in need of regener regeneration. And while it's obviously only one of the wide network of Roman roads, Watling Street particularly interests me because by chance it links a number of sites that I as a pottery specialist have worked on. So I wanted to start by just giving you a journey of you know, my perspective of Watling Street. 
So Cameron, thank you very much. You've said everything I think everyone needs to know about Roxeter, so I can race through this. I think I wanted a couple of things I wanted to add to what Cameron said. Um, that English Heritage has funded a project to make information from the Graham Webster Excavation Archive online. So that's a really useful outcome. Obviously, Cam Cameron continues to do interesting research on the finds, so that's been a great thing. There are some finds from Oxford and Shrewsbury Museum, as well as in the um, English Heritage Store. Um, and I think the, the other thing is that the, I suppose the Heritage Store, which was at Atcham, has now moved down to Rest Park, so it's, it's moved away. And, and one, one other thing, just thinking about community engagement, Obviously, though, the excavations, there was um, a large programme of geophysical survey and there was the Leverhulme funded project which surveyed transects of the surrounding um, hinterland, which used a large number of volunteers. There was an awful lot of public engagement in that. And obviously, there's lots of, lots of amazing finds, tons of Roman pottery. So it's a, a shed, there's a scheduled ancient monument in the care of English heritage. Significant standing remains to see a reconstructed townhouse and the museum and there's various events that are organised, kind of family, family events there as well. Discussion with Roger White suggests there might be some questions about visitor numbers. He was saying that while Rockster has about 20,000 visitors a year, nearby At Attingham Park at Atcham, which is run by the National Trust, has nearly half a million visitors annually. So there's a bit of a question as why why all those people going to somewhere so nearby aren't coming to Roxeter as well. And the pottery and other finds from Roxeter provide plenty of evidence of trade along Rock Watling Street. So I've just put in this picture um, from the, gut the gutter find at Roxeter, which obviously got imported Samian and it's got Mortaria from Manchester Hearts Hill. Another site I've worked on is Red Hill, Uxacona, which is situated on Watling Street to the east of Roxeter. This is also a scheduled site, but there's nothing there for visitors to see, so the aerial view is the road going through the countryside. This was probably the last staging post in the supply chain to Roxeter from the south. There's a fort, a mansio, and a roadside settlement. The finds from Worcestershire Archaeology's excavations are now published and Historic England funded a Worcester archaeology project to make the archive from David Brown's 1970s excavations accessible online, so again through ADS. The finds are stored at Shrewsbury Museum. The pottery and other finds show parallels with rocks turned sites to the south. So I'll just put in these glass medallions on the, um, on the right here from Rockster Legionary Assemblage on the, on the left from Red Hill. So with all these sites down Watling Street, you see links in the material culture. The Worcester archaeology excavations also produced the most Roman shirt I've ever recorded. And that's, you know, with all the worries about talking about being Roman. But this, um, this shirt depicts Aeneas, the ancestor of Romulus and Remus, carrying his father. It's part of the foundation story of Rome. And you feel surely that points to somebody um, who clearly identified themselves as Roman. So that, that feels quite significant in the middle of Shropshire, really. So the next site down, Wall, Lettucetum. That's an important military staging post and a posting station near the junction of Watling Street and Icknield Street. The site here is managed and maintained by English Heritage, but owned by the National Trust. There are impressive Roman remains for visitors to see, the Mancio and the public baths. Entry is free. And Wall is actually promoted on the website as a site on Watling Street, where weary Roman officials, soldiers and imperial messengers could find lodging for the night and change their horses. That's Mike, Mike Hodder giving a guided tour of the site. Wall also has a st substantial archive, and that's another of the archives that Cameron curates um, for English Heritage. There's a very active group of volunteers, the Friends of Lettucetum, who run the museum and lead guided tours which bring the site to life. There are lots of finds that remain unpublished or not published to modern standards, and this is another archive that would benefit from being made accessible online. Oh. 
Uh, for those of you who were at the 2015 conference, you might remember that Laura Griffin and myself um, gave a talk about Munster Hearts Hill and our hopes for the archive there. Um, this is an archive held by Warwickshire Museums. This project has gone ahead um, and I'm currently, currently working on a historic England funded project to digitise key elements of the archive and make these accessible online. I was chatting to Gail about the fact that we're digitising the key elements for research but there are some really good stories in there as well that we need to think about maybe how to get some of those out as well. Samantha is another staging post on Watling Street, the Roman fort, the Roman town. But the site is most famous for its Roman, well to me, it's most famous for its Roman pottery industry and particularly for the production of mortaria. There are 61 kilns excavated along with a variety of associated features. But there's no standing remains for visitors to see. Sorry, I should say on the left there, that's Kay Hartley who excavated the site, who had her 90th birthday this year and is still going strong. Um, so Kay Hartley's analysis of the potter stamps on Mortaria demonstrated that individual potters and perhaps their workshops moved along Watling Street from Verulamium, St Albans, to Munster. So that's a similar um, theme, I suppose, to the one we heard about the coins this morning. You can also see the influence of Verulamium potters in the types of kilns used, so at Munster Hearts Hill and other sites in the region. A kiln excavated at Sheriffwood Lane in Sutton Coalfield has parallels with kilns in London. So you can see the movement of potters from Verulamium going south and to the north. And this ties in with themes that seem to have come out the past couple of days about migration of people. But it's also, think, thinking about the Mortaria, it, it's um, bringing new cuisines and the cultural changes that that represents. And that's actually quite an important theme in the Midlands, which is quite a multicultural area. So I say there's not much to see there um, on the ground, but the local community and particularly the Athelstan Civic Society have really engaged with promoting the Roman heritage of Manseter. They were the initial driving force in getting work on the archive done. They've established a Roman Manseter trail with information boards signposting the main features of the Roman settlement. And they're currently setting up an exhibition in the church with a particular focus on Boudicca's last battle. And that's why I kind of laughed to myself when I said, you know, it's most famous for Mortaria. But actually what interests them is Boudicca's last battle. And um, one of the members is writing a book suggests, arguing for the case that it might have taken place at Hearts Hill. Well, obviously the precise location will be the subject of continuing debate, but this is a really important story in Britain's history. And there's a community there that want to tell that story. And that linked in, I think, with what Gail Boyle was saying about co-creation, letting people give their different perspectives and allowing people to make contact with the past at the level they choose. So it was just interesting to me that I'm really focused on the pottery, and they're really focused on, on the battle. Milton Keynes. As pictures of ancient monuments go, this is probably one of the more unprepossessing. And Milton Keynes doesn't immediately spring to mind when you think of heritage destinations, but there's significant Roman archaeology in the area. The late Iron Age and early Roman pottery specialist Isabel Thompson is currently reviewing the evidence for early grog-tempered wares in the southeast, and she's very interested in the role that Watling Street played in the movement of these wares into the Midlands. So you're actually looking at you know, the first potters coming in, in in the Roman period and thinking about what that represents. So the drawing on the right here, that shows a vessel from Milton Keynes, an early Belgic vessel. The pot on the left is one of the ones that was in that display that I showed you a photograph of from Wall. So I kind of think, you know, you can see the, these vessels moving up Watling Street. They're not typical of um, kind of Warwickshire and Staffordshire, it's something that's been introduced. So I just wanted to make the point that even in these places that they're not picturesque, there's perhaps nothing on the ground to see, there's still an important story to tell. So while I'm looking at 
um, the assemblages from individual sites. To me, Watling Street is very present. It's a linking factor between all these, these different sites. Um, but how do we make that um, more visible in the public eye? And I have concerns that, well, commercial archaeology is very fragmented. So I've been very lucky. I worked at Birmingham University. I worked with Roger White and Vince Gaffney. And when they were doing all these big projects at Roxeter, um, Worcester Archaeology dug at Red Hill. Now I've got, I, by chance, I've got involved in this project um, at Manchester Hearts Hill. It's not, it's not my county. It's not my backlog, but I engaged with it. Um, but archaeologists now, units are working all over the country. They're not necessarily in control of the, the areas that they're researching. They're having to be familiar with material from all over the place. So who are the people that are going to have that regional, local knowledge? I'm not sure. And if you're thinking about Watling Street, there are numerous county HERs and museums. There's two um, English heritage collection areas. Um, there's sites owned by English Heritage, um, there's the National Trust, there's local community groups, things like, the Ath things like the Atherson Civic Society with their walking routes and the museum. In a way, there's almost too many people involved and Watling Street just seems to fall through the gaps in terms of public perception. So thinking about how to bring it together, First of all, I looked at the, the Heritage Gateway site, and obviously that provides a search facility for monuments associated with Watling Street. But a lot of work would be needed to try and bring information together and get a sense of what's been achieved and what the gaps are and what directions we might want to move in. I wonder whether there's a potential collaborative PhD project there. Watling Street is highlighted in the West Midlands Research Assessment for the Roman period particularly in relation to the large defended sites, the so-called Burgi, which is one at Red Hill, the Water Eaton, Wall, Manchester and Caves Inn. But it crosses a number of counties, and in fact it forms the boundary between the West Midlands and the East Midlands research areas for parts of its route. If you visit the, the pottery site, the kiln site at Manchester, as we did in the summer with the stu um, study group for Roman pottery, you can stand in a field and look at a building over the road. And when you're in the field, you're in Warwickshire and you're in the West Midlands research framework. And over the road, it's Leicestershire and it's the East Midlands research framework. And it's, you know, you think this is silly. <laughs> it also cuts across three of the regions defined by the Roman Rural Settlement Project, which is the map on the left, which actually makes it quite interesting. It, you know, it dissects them all. So could you look at changes across the different regions? So... I think there's lots of research questions there that would be good to follow up and it's thinking about, well, how could we progress that? Then I was thinking about how can we make Watling Street more visible in the public and imagination? So I looked at the English Heritage website and I thought, I'll do a search on Watling Street. And yes, um, some sites came up. So the sites come up in order of distance from Watling Street. So we've got Wall, got Roxeter, there was a slight issue, I think, that wall, wall, it says, is five miles from Watling Street. And the more I looked at the distribution of sites in relation to Watling Street, I think Watling Street is wall or somewhere near wall in this map. So then when you look at the other sites, there's actually 382 sites if you search on Watling Street, including 47 Roman sites which includes Chester, which makes sense because you're coming up Watling Street and, you know, come on to Chester, visit Chester. It also includes sites on Hadrian's Wall and Garrison Walls in Cornwall. So, you know, there's something in the algorithm. And in a way, it's interesting to see, I was thinking if you did have a website for Watling Street, you might want to have Colchester in there and say, well, if you're interested in this, go to Colchester as well. There's no reason why you can't have other sites on there. But... You kind of think Hadrian's Wall is maybe a bit far away. This also raises questions of, well, how big is the Watling Street hinterland? What would, if, if we were going to define an area that related to Watling Street, what would we say that was? And obviously, this just contains English heritage sites as well, so it doesn't tell you about other sites that might be next door that might be of interest to somebody 
visiting these sites. But don't tell you about museums and museum collections perhaps associated with them. There's another site run by West Midlands History. And this website also lists places of interest to visit, but none of them are Roman. This could and should change. And in fact, I think there has been a realisation that Roman heritage is underrepresented. And again, talking to Roger White this week, he's actually in the process of recording podcasts on the Roman West Midlands for inclusion on the site. And the places to visit that they have on their website already do in, does include um, destinations beyond the West Midlands region. For example, the Elan Valley Reservoir in relation to Joseph Chamberlain. So from that respect, something like this, you could have um, you know, Verrill Amy, you could have Colchester, you could have Chester, you could have lots of sites that tied in with the themes that you wanted to encourage people to think about. And just as a couple of other examples, there's the Derwent Valley Mills website, which links site in a heritage landscape. And of course, Hadrian's Wall. Wouldn't it be great if, well for me, if Watling Street was treated the same as Hadrian's Wall and seen as this major significant um, monument going across the landscape. So I've got lots of ideas um, and it's, it's thinking about how to take it forward. So it's been very useful for me coming to this conference and hearing um, all the expertise about how, how to present finds, how to um, think of things like um, getting collections into the community. I really like that idea that Chester work, um, so having mobile collections, active collections, I've got you could have a bus going up and down Watling Street, or get um, collections into shops or different places in di different towns along Watling Street, or service stations, petrol stations, could you have displays? I like the idea of um, co-creation, um, the Athens and Civic Society really inspired me with their enthusiasm for their heritage and all the way up and down Watling Street there will be local communities who are engaging with their heritage but how do we link them together so perhaps that's something through the CBA. I like the idea of the Pokemon trails actually I thought oh, you could have Pokemon trails all the way up Watling Street and you'd have to think of an owl or whatever it was going to be that would appear all the way up Watling Street so there's, there's lots of ideas that come out from weekend how to take forward but I suppose for me part of the problem is I, I kind of think well who who am I I'm a Roman pottery specialist in a commercial unit what influence do I have and is this a good idea so I suppose the idea of presenting it is to get some feedback because I don't think anything could move forward actually without the engagement of um, people with museums expertise um, so is, are there people who, who think this is a good idea, would engage in trying to drive this forward? And then we can think about how on earth we might achieve that. Um, and I'll put my um, email address on at the end if anybody wants to get in touch, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed at the end of the conference to talk now. I just wanted to end um, with my holiday snaps. <laughs> I've just been to Germany and been to um, Zanten and Trier. But Zanton is just amazing, and the, the whole thing of reconstruction. Actually, you don't have to have major standing remains to tell an amazing story about Roman Britain. And it just struck me the whole idea of transport, having um, reconstructions of carts and things, and talking about how transport worked. Could you have things like that that moved to different sites along Watling Street or shared by different museums? Could you be looking at... Um, museums along Watling Street starting to share their collections and thinking about what the overall story is, what their strengths are in that story. And I suppose rather than encouraging visitors to come to one individual museum, thinking about, well, how do you get them to go to the next museum along the line? And how do you link in with other Roman sites in Britain? So there's potential to think about transport, but just... Um, but just life. Anybody that knows James will like that picture. It's just thinking about how there, there's so many of us working in so many different fragmented parts of archaeology who have an enthusiasm for understanding Roman Britain and just thinking about how we can communicate that, how we bring it together and would Watling Street be a model for 
a line through Britain that you could tie all these other sites onto to try and get a unified theme and get people move, actually moving through Roman Britain rather than thinking about individual sites to visit. So, thank you.